Good morning, students. Let's continue from your supplementary reading moments, chapter three, Iswaranda Storyteller. We have this is the third part. You will see there are three. This is not a three third part, but it's a third video of this chapter, same chapter, Iswaranda Storyteller by R K Lakshman. The other day we have we had stopped on page number sixteen, where Mahendra schools. Uh, Iswaran, because he starts telling the story of uh, this particular woman holding fetus in its arms, and uh, only about this he was frightened. And um, Mahendra tries to convince him that it is not true; there are no ghosts. However, heart to heart, he is frightened from that day onwards. When he heard this story, this particular story, that Iswaran uh, Mahendra also started getting frightened. In the introduction, I had told you that all of us. Uh, heart to heart, there is a fear of devils, of ghosts, or evil spirit. Though some of us we don't express, but deep down it is there. And in the where we have stopped it on page number sixteen, you see the last. From that day on, Mahendra, for all his brave talk, went to be bed with a certain unease. Unease means not comfortable, uncomfortable. You know, feeling something uneasiness. Every night he peered into the darkness. Peered means peeped into the darkness. outside through the window next to his bed he was just looking outside trying to make sure that there was no movement of dark shapes in the vicinity in that locality vicinity is locality there is no dark shapes but he could only see the sea of darkness with the twinkling lights of the factory miles away he couldn't see anything except that there was some um, light twinkling some shining light coming from the factory miles away from far Because little little the light was coming, only that much he couldn't see anything. Hope pen, you have got the pencil. Page number seventeen, you see the second paragraph. He had always liked to admire the milk white landscape on full moon nights, but after hearing his foreign story of the female ghost, he avoided looking out of his window altogether when the moon was full, because you remember his foreign has told that this. appeared when on the during the full moon this um, the skeleton of a woman holding a fetus in its arms with the matted hair with this like a skeleton and so iswaran though he was admirer of landscape on full moon night that means during the full moon night mahendra would look always outside of his window and admire the landscape you know you know dear children when you are in the village or the rural areas in the city you don't enjoy this full moon night but then in the villages when there is a full moon night everywhere silence you will experience such a divine presence something very uh, what to say unexplainable is very beautiful and he used to always look from the through the window this full moon night and he would enjoy but after hearing this iswaran story of this female ghost altogether he avoided looking outside his window okay he did not even look outside the window on the full moon night because iswaran has told him that on full moon night this ghost appears okay one night mahendra was woken up from his sleep by a low moan close to his window low moan means uh, cry moan is to cry okay something somebody will cry out of pain that is called moaning m o n e Okay, and then moan close to his window. Okay, moaning here you have got here. Okay, moan. Moan is to uh, cry out of pain because of the pain from his window, and he got up. He was sleeping, but then he got up. At first, he put it down to a cat prowling around for mice. Mice prowling means what is the meaning of prowling? That means searching or the looking for a prey of the cat. Cat was making noise, just looking for a. mice this is what he thought but the sound was too guttural for a cat he resisted the curiosity to look out lest he should behold a sight which would stop his heart but the wailing became louder and less feline feline he could not resist the temptation any more lowering himself to the level of the window sill he looked out at the white sheet of moonlight outside there not too far away was a dark cloudy form clutching a bundle mahendra broke into a cold sweat and fell back on the pillow panting 
As he gradually recovered from the ghastly experience, he began to reason with himself and finally concluded that it must have been some sort of auto-suggestion, some trick that his subconscious had played on him. You understood what it is, my dear students? You know, uh, one night, Mahendra was sleeping and he was woken up by a low moan close to his window moan somebody is crying some crying out of pain close to the window first he thought probably it was a cat just looking for a mice but the sound was too guttural where it is the sound was too guttural you see here guttural too guttural means it would be something um, it is not possible that a cat would make such a sound coming from the throat you know so too deep uh, moaning this crying so it cannot be a cat and therefore what he did first of all he resisted that means he stopped no no, no need to be curious to see what is there okay so he just he he thought he will not look outside to find out what it was because if he sees outside if something like what is Warren has explained if he sees then he it, his heart might stop you see with the fear but this wailing became louder and less feline. Feline means what? What the feline means? Like a cat. Because first he thought it's a cat sound, you see. You see? Um, but he thought he will look. First he thought he will look outside the window. But afterwards he thought if he sees something, it would stop his heart. And so he did not look outside. But then wailing became louder. Wailing means wailing. I, this word has come earlier also. Wailing means crying. This crying became louder and less feline. Louder more more and more louder and less phenyl, less like cat like first he thought it was a cat sound but now it was louder and louder and it was not like cat okay not the sound of cat and so he could not resist the temptation anymore he could not hold on could not resist you know could not hold on for himself this temptation to look outside first he controlled but then now he could no longer he could control himself and so he looked outside what he did he just he peeped through the window seal and he could see the white sheet of moonlight outside everywhere white so clear so bright moonlight and not far away from his window he could see a dark cloudy form you know something darkness and something from clutching a bundle you know clutching means to holding tight something is catching one bundle like you know in the darkness against all light you know so bright there is something dark form cloudy form mahendra now he became started sweating cold sweat and he just he fell back on the pillow panting panting means breath breathless panting you know started breathing very fast and slowly you know gradually recovered gradually he slowly you know slowly he recovered from the ghastly experience some ghost experience you no know, ghastly experience he had and so he started to reason out with himself and he concluded that it must have been some some sort of auto suggestion some auto suggestion meaning his himself his imagination this is what he thought it would have been an his own imagination and then what he did some trick that his subconscious has played on him subconscious means something with his without conscious unknowingly you know subconscious you see subconscious has played on him it is something of a, his own imagination this is what he he thought okay next paragraph the last paragraph by the time he had got up in the morning had a bath and come out to have his breakfast the horror of the previous night had faded from his memory iswaran greeted him at the door with his lunch packet and his bag just as mahendra was stepping out iswaran grinned and said sir Remember the other day when I was telling you about the female ghost with a fetus in its arms? You were so angry with me for imagining things. Well, you saw her yourself last night. I came running hearing the sound of moaning that was coming from your room. You see, you understood what has happened here, my dear students? You see, um, Mahendra, his usual timing was what? In the morning he would have bath, have breakfast and then he would go to the, uh, for his job. And Iswaran would come with a uh, tiffin no, for, his, the, for the lunch. And then 
After that, you see, the horror of the previous night had faded from his memory. Horror, something horrible, horror story, okay, something very dangerous story. This is horror. The previous night had faded. Faded means he already, it is gone. It had faded. Already he had forgotten from his memory, from his mind. Now, you see, Swaran, what is it? He greeted him, no, good morning, probably. There's a greeting and gave the lunch packet. And when Iswar, Mahendra was about to step out, Iswaran grinned. What is the meaning of grinned? Just laughing, you know, showing teeth. It's called grin. He laughed and said, Sir, when the other day when I was telling you about the female ghost with fetus in its arms, you were so angry with me for imagining things. You were telling that it is only my imagination. It is only, it is nothing, no, there is no ghost. And you told me to go and examine my head as well. Do you remember? Telling, well, now you saw it for yourself last night. He's telling, I came running, hearing the sound of moaning that was coming from your room. This moaning is what? This crying. Okay, this is all moaning. I heard this moaning coming out from your room. What would have happened to uh, Iswaran? Did this morning coming from Mahendra's room? No, but then Mahendra surely might have made some noise because he has heard this crying outside. But again he want to make him frightened. Iswaran wants to convince Mahendra that there are ghosts in, does exist. Clear? A chill went down Mahendra's spine. A chill. He became cold, you know. He became cold, chill. He became chilled. He became, it became very cold, you know. Mahendra's spine. Spine means, you know, in his back. He did not wait for Iswaran to complete his sentence. He hurried away to his office and handed in his papers, resolving to leave the haunted place the very next day. He wanted to resign. He wanted to go from that place. He did not wait for Iswaran to complete because he has heard it last previous night, you know, that what has happened to him. And therefore, he did not wait for um, uh, Iswaran to complete his sentence. He hurried away. He went very fast to his office, handed, uh, handed over in his papers, resolving. He made sure, he resolved, he, he made promise that he wants to leave that haunted place the very next day. What is this haunted place means? You know, as if it's the occupied by devils. That is called haunted place. As if and the um, evil spirit has occupied that place. So I don't want to live, live in this place. That is called haunted place. Clear? My dear students. Now, do you think really that ghost exists? Evil spirit exists? I am not going to give you answer for a yes or no. Depends. Each one's experience and imagination and belief system. Okay? Let's quickly. This is not our matter of discussion here. Uh, open your book number 8, page number 18. There are 6 questions are there. Quickly. Okay, quickly I will uh, discuss with you. Afterwards you search from the um, textbook and write it in your notebook. First question. In what way is Varan an asset to Mahendra? Asset, I told you what is the meaning of asset. If you know the meaning, then only you can uh, write the answer. Okay. Asset means what? It's a, it's a treasure. It's a, it's a wealth. For Mahendra. Answer would be, you know, you, you will find this answer in your textbook also on the page number, page number 13. Yes, yes, page number 13, you will see first paragraph you will find. Mahendra was an obedient person. He was Mahendra's cook. He was very caring and hardworking. He did all the jobs such as cooking meal, washing clothes and chatting with Mahendra at night. He obeyed his master with full dedication. So he was an asset to Mahendra. He never complained. You know, he could adjust with any odd situation. Second question. How does Iswaran describe the uprooted tree on the highway? What effect does he want to create in his listeners? You will find in the page number 13, last paragraph you will find this. Iswaran was greatly influenced by the Tamil authors. That is thrillers, you remember. He was in the habit of creating suspense. He had the quality of narrating even the smallest incident in impressive way. He presented the incident related to the uprooted tree on the highway in a dramatic way. He was alone and the road was deserted. He saw something that looked like an enormous beast, bushy beast, he says, lying across the road. But as soon as he came closer, he found there nothing but a fallen tree. His main purpose was to create suspense and surprise. 
the second part now what effect does he want to create he wants to create suspense and surprise third question how does he narrate the story of the tasker does it appear to be plausible that will find page number 14 second paragraph onwards you know it's quite long but then uh, just listen try to listen and you write in your own words uh, make it short does it appear to be plausible iswaran narrated the story of the tusker exaggeratedly the tusker having escaped from the timber yard from there you begin stamped on bushes tore up wild creepers and broke the branches at his will the elephant became uncontrollable and entered the school ground it created chaos there everyone in the school tried to escape no one dared to face the tusker in the meantime iswaran grabbed a cane from a teacher and moved towards the elephant he hit its third toenail and the beast collapsed he claimed that he had used the japanese art to control the tusker but this story seems totally implausible as it is very difficult to believe that a child can control a mad mad elephant it's not possible my dear students he is telling this story just to create some interesting and to surprise to create some suspense that was he is telling he he beat the hit the elephant on his uh, stick not possible no no teacher will allow him to go also fourth question why does the author say that iswaran seem to more than make up for the absence of a tv in mahendra's living quarters they did not have the television you remember that page number 15 you will find that answer okay second third or fourth paragraph small paragraph is Varun was an expert in telling adventurous and mysterious stories in a dramatic way it was his daily routine to entertain Mahendra at night Mahendra could listen to and watch the development of the story thus is Varun seemed to more than make up for the absence of a television fifth question Mahendra calls ghost or spirits a figment of the imagination what happens to him on a full moon night? Just now what we did. Mahendra calls ghost or spirits a figment of the imagination as he did not believe in the ghosts. One day Iswaran told him about a female ghost holding a fetus in, his, in her arms. On a full moon night he woke up from his sleep and looked outside the window. He got shocked to see the same figure and began to sweat profusely my dear students write in your own words you can write little more also okay what happened at night he thought first it was a cat but then he realized that cat cannot make this much noise this much cry and so he peeped through the window and there he saw against the full moon night he sees something dark cloudy form clutching a bundle and he think he tried to believe that there is a ghost okay you write in your own words Sixth, can you think of some other ending up for the story? That's something different way it should have ended. The present story ends with what? Mahendra's resolve to leave the haunted place. That is the end. But it is not the appropriate ending. There should have been something else, no? Mahendra should not have decided to leave the haunted place without knowing the reality. He should have done some research, some finding out he should have done. The story could end like this. Courageously, Mahendra should have approached the woman and tried to know the reality. As soon as Mahendra caught the woman, it became the revelation of the mystery. It was none but Iswaran in the guise of a ghost of woman. It would have been like that. He could have, it was the, it was, Iswaran was the one trying to make him frighten. Are you understanding? He said, no, I, you heard in your own way, no, sir, you did not believe me that day, but it came to your room. So who it was? Iswaran himself trying to make him frighten he was making this kind of noise and holding something in the bun in the bundle no something holding in his hand and at night naturally it was looking something very dark Mahendra could not recognize it was Iswaran himself and um, so write all this write in your own words write long answers try to write the long answers and um, write in your own words and learn the question answer six questions are there only from uh, from your supplementary reading no extra questions will be asked only what is there behind the book behind the lesson sorry each up to the end of each lesson whatever questions are there that much you study okay thank you students have a nice day